Welcome to round four of the R5 Rally Championship and First Citizens King of the Hill 2023, an event that brings together a blend of courage, precision, and machine might. This was to be an unforgettable day of competitive rallying, where every curve, crest, and climb amplified the spirit of Barbados rallying. Against the stunning backdrop of the southeast corner of the island, the battleground extended over 4.2 grueling kilometers, beginning at Palmer's at the foot of Stewart's Hill and St. Philip. This crucible of competition combines sweeping high-speed sections, daunting crests, and a heart-stopping climb through multiple uphill hairpins. The journey led our competitors to Codrington, challenging them with a sharp left turn, propelling them upwards on the relentless steep hill towards Society Plantation. The tension, the excitement, the awe. It was an event not just witnessed, but felt by the enormous crowd. This sprint brought together a first-rate field of local, regional, and international champions, each daring to become the ultimate king of the hill. But there could only be one, a single day of rallying that demanded not just speed, but also strategy and resilience. Let's go. This year's King of the Hill event saw an unexpected guest, a true heavy hitter from the world of rallying, Irishman Ollie O'Donovan. A decorated competitor and previous British rallycross champion, O'Donovan didn't come to Barbados to play tourists. Fresh off a of victory in Britain's Circuit Rally Championship, he arrived with a singular mission, making his first appearance in Barbados in his immaculate Hyundai i20 R5. But this journey was not without its bumps in the road. The first run saw O'Donovan grappling with boost issues in his Hyundai. However, this formidable competitor has been down tough roads before. Unfazed, O'Donovan and the Albatech racing team worked tirelessly to rectify the issue, determined to claw their way back up through the ranks. Despite the setbacks, O'Donovan thoroughly enjoyed the sprint. His contagious enthusiasm radiated throughout the entire event. The King of the Hill event ended with O'Donovan placing a commendable 10th in the R5 category and 17th overall. For a guest driver with mechanical issues, that's no small feat. We look forward to seeing more of this champion's grit and determination at the flagship Rally Barbados. In the gripping world of rallying, triumph is often forged in the crucible of adversity. It is this narrative of relentless determination that sets the stage for our returning crowd favorites, Josh Reed and Mark Jordan. After enduring a massive setback in round three at the Shakedown Stages Rally, their Ford Fiesta R5 needed a full-scale repair, an endeavor undertaken by the tireless crew at Pro Auto Works, who turned night into day to ensure the team's triumphant return. Speaking to Josh ahead of the event, one couldn't help but feel an overwhelming gratitude radiating from him, thankful for his resilient team's effort to get the car ready to race. But there was more than gratitude, there was resolution a drive to shrug off the incident of round three and get back into the hot seat. After the first pass with a time of 2 minutes 23.16, Josh conceded that he was on the slower end, but it was all part of the plan. It was about having a clean run to acclimatize to the stage and settle back into the rhythm. But as with all seasoned ralliers, the real magic happened over the subsequent runs. Over three runs, Josh shaved a striking six seconds off, clocking in a fastest time of two minutes, 17.95. Good enough to clinch eighth place in the championship and position himself P14 for the start of Rally Barbados. Josh Reed's return is not just a story of perseverance, it's a story of rising against the odds. So get ready, folks. Rally Barbados is all set to rumble. Enter Britain's Rob Swan and his Skoda Fabia R5. Rob entered the event seeking to turn his fortune around following a challenging 2022 campaign. However, it's essential to remember the unique place Swan holds in the archives of Caribbean rally history. The British driver is the only one to clinch a Group N win in both Barbados and Jamaica within the same year, a feat he accomplished back in 2010. An extraordinary achievement indeed, solidifying his name as a formidable challenger on foreign turf. This year, 
he arrived at King of the Hill without his trusted co-driver Darren Garrard, who was still nursing injuries from their previous power pole encounter in round three of the R5 Championship. Nonetheless, Craig Yearwood, an experienced hand, filled in, ready to navigate the challenging course ahead. Swan started the King of the Hill in unmissable style, shooting straight to second in the R5 class and fourth overall. The British driver visibly elated in his post-run one interview, shared his euphoria for the stage and his exhilaration at being back in the hot seat. However, this jubilation would face a stumbling block as mechanical gremlins invaded his Fabia R5. His pop-off valve started acting up across runs two and three, leading to power drops that Swan battled to overcome. Despite these setbacks, the seasoned driver held on to finish at a respectable P7 in the R5 Rally Championship and P13 overall at the King of the Hill. With his talent and determination, there's definitely more to come from this British rallying competitor. In the relentless world of rallying, there's a father-son duo that consistently keeps us on the edge of our seats. Mark Maloney and his son Justin. These two bring more than just a competitive spirit to the rally, they bring a bond forged in horsepower and adrenaline. Known for his measured approach, Mark is candid about one of his challenges, needing time to ramp up his speed. While this might be less significant in a sprint event like the First Citizens King of the Hill, it could pose a considerable challenge in a full-scale rally. But despite this, the first pass saw Mark clock an impressive 2 minutes 20.96, a time so close to Paul Horton of the Turks and Caicos rally team, they were separated by just one tenth of a second. The rivalry was set. The stage primed for an intense face-off. This battle in the R5 group played out across all three runs, with both Mark and Paul shaving off a full four seconds in their second run. But as the dust settled, Mark would narrowly miss out on that fifth place finish to Paul by a heart-stopping three-tenths of a second at the end of the event. Though he may not have clinched the higher spot, Mark secured a solid nine points in the championship, and what we've witnessed here is a thrilling preview of the battle to come in Rally Barbados. Turks and Caicos rally driver Paul Horton recently debuted his Citroen C3 Rally 2 in replacement of his previous Ford Fiesta. This would bring a fresh new R5 manufacturer to the island's premier rallying championship. Guided by the triple British rally champion Matt Edwards as both driver, coach and co-driver, Paul was poised to make a significant impact at King of the Hill. Although run one saw Horton start cautiously, mindful of slick oil on the road at the Society T Junction and the chicane, his spirits remained high. Enjoying the thrill of the competition and the wild enthusiasm of the fans, Horton commented, the fans were crazy out there. The whole stage was packed with people. By runs two and three, Horton was hitting his stride, upping the pace significantly and demonstrating a palpable connection with his new vehicle. A nail-biting finish saw Horton clock in at an impressive two minutes 15.57 securing him a P5 placement in the R5 Championship and 10th place overall. Paul Horton, the pride of Turks and Caicos, is truly seizing the reins of his new Citroen and showing a spectacular pace as he hurtles towards Rally Barbados. It's clear, this is only the beginning for Horton, as we all anticipate the thrills that are yet to come. Walk a bit now. Flat left, 18 crest, keep left. Coming off the back of a strong performance in round three, Roger Hill and Graham Gittins were ready to charge at the First Citizens King of the Hill event. Clocking in at a 2 minutes 22.22 seconds in the first pass, Hill noted the stage's tricky and slippery areas. But true to his nature, he saw not a challenge, but an opportunity for improvement. Hill, a seasoned driver known for his consistency, is always there, persistently nipping at the heels of the leaders. With each pass, Hill found more confidence, honing his technique and rhythm. Then came the final push in the third run. Hill attacked the stage with gusto, clocking in a blistering 2 minutes 15.44. In what can only be described as a neck-and-neck -neck battle, Hill edged out Paul Horton by one-tenth of a second and Mark Maloney by four-tenths. It was a thrilling spectacle, a display of fierce competition among the trio. Securing fourth place among the championship cars, Hill brought home 13 crucial points and earned seventh spot overall in the event. The P7 
path to victory is paved with trials and tribulations, a tale all too familiar for reigning R5 rally champion Stuart Maloney, co-driven by Christian Yearwood. The duo faced an early hiccup during the first run of the stage when they cut a corner by society too close and ended up puncturing their front right wheel. Demonstrating true resilience, Stuart managed to limp his car through the rest of the stage and replace the flat. The ordeal was far from over, as en route back to service, Stuart discovered a bent arm from the incidents, and as fate would have it, he fell prey to a suspension arm failure about a third of the way through the second run, abruptly ending that pass. However, as anyone who follows motorsport knows, counting Stuart Maloney out would be a grave error. With his indomitable spirit, he came back for the third and final run, clocking an exceptional 2 minutes 13.72 a time that was just two tenths shy of Kyle Gregg and seven tenths off of Jeff Panton. An astonishingly fast time, considering it was his only clean run. His tenacity paid off as this feat secured him third place points for the championship and sixth place overall in the event. Jamaican Kyle Gregg is taking the R5 Rally Championship by storm, with co-driver Ori Hunt by his side in their brand new Ford Fiesta Rally 2, the pair were ready to shake the dust off the roads. Prior to the start of the event, Kyle mentioned his eagerness to make dry runs to properly shake down his new Fiesta, and when the dust settled on run 1, a slightly slower pace for Gregg, but the jubilation was clear. His words, now I know what grip feels like. <laughs> No, it was grip. I have grip now. <laughs> from the last shake now. But yeah, I have a slight push. I guess we were waiting for so long at the start line. But now I feel potential in the car, so it's good. And I enjoy that. That's good, good, good speed. We're a little tentative, but it's first run. And with that newfound knowledge, Greg and Hunt shaved huge chunks of time in runs two and three, postering a blustering time of two minutes 13.54. It was a performance that had the crowd on its feet. With that, they claim second place in the R5 Rally Championship and a solid fourth overall for the event, just a blink, 0.45 seconds away from snatching the crown. This was a battle for the ages against fellow Jamaican Jeffrey Panton. It was a display of pure speed, skill, and a rivalry that ignited the fans. And what a showdown it was, two Jamaican powerhouses making their home country proud on the international stage. One name ignited all the excitement this week, Jeffrey Panton. Fresh from his mentorship of ERC champion Chris Ingram, Panton, from Jamaica, was nothing short of resolute and remarkably confident as he headed into the high stakes sprint event. Rally Barbados is undeniably the main stage, yet Panton treated this first citizen's king of the hill as his personal proving ground. It was here that he displayed a revitalized driving style, an attitude shift behind the wheel, a testament to the intensive collaboration with Chris Ingram. Yeah, at the moment we've, we've not changed too much. It was more on, on Jeff's driving style and smoothness, really. Um, but yeah, he made big progress during the day, so hopefully he can implement that today and, and next weekend. The left four tightens with a nip. The left four times with a nip into right four over Chris. Six, six. As the dust settled after the first pass, Panton emerged a force to reckon with coming in second fastest in the R5 group, trailing by a mere 1.5 seconds off the leader, New Zealand's very own Hayden Padden. A little cautious, but first run, so get a feel for what the corner and the high speed corners are like. Um, but all in all, pretty good. A couple of times in high speed where we lost the rear a little bit, but nothing significant. Happy with the car? Very. But Jeff Panton was just revving up. Keeping his focus laser sharp and his spirits unyielding, he roared into the second pass, shaving an impressive four seconds off his time. He was not just keeping up with the pace, he was setting it. Then came the third and final run. Jeff gunned his way through, going another two tenths faster. And ladies and gentlemen, with this daring performance, he clinched first place in the R5 Rally Championship. Not just content with the maximum 25 points, he also took him third place overall in the event. 
hold on to your seats because Jeff Panton is backing the game and trust us when we say this, he's not going down without giving it his all. Turn right to eight, no. And 50. Laid left for long stay and right five. Left seven at press 80. Right four early. Ladies and gentlemen, enter current European Rally Championship leader and New Zealand's greatest rally driver, guest competitor Hayden Padden in his Hyundai i20 R5. Padden, relishing the opportunity, likened this uphill sprint to the thrilling hill challenges he faces back in New Zealand. A test session, a tuning practice he called it, this was his chance to intimately understand this new Hyundai i20 R5. Now looking forward to it, it's actually a bit of a test session for us, we haven't driven this car yet, so uh, we're going to get the car tuned up. You know, it's a very relaxed, fun atmosphere here, so obviously when the helmet goes on, you want to be competitive, but um, we're actually here to enjoy ourselves as well, and I guess have a bit of a rally holiday. Good weather, it's a bit hot, but uh, the faster you go, the more airflow you get, and can get the car to cool yourself down. Run one bore witness to Patton's impeccable skill, putting up an impressive pace. Post-stage interview found him contemplating setup changes, reading the rows as being slippier than expected. The masterful driver didn't miss a beat. As the event progressed to run three, Padden flexes on rivaled rally craft, taking on the course with deft precision and bold aggression. His time, an unbeatable two minutes, nine seconds, 0.53. The fastest in class, the fastest overall, making him the indisputable king of the hill for 2023. Amidst the applause and the confetti, Padden wearing a triumphant smile, reveled in his success. He talks about looking forward to the upcoming Rally Barbados and a relaxing week of golf and perhaps a little fishing on this beautiful island. A truly remarkable beginning for this Caribbean Rally debutant. New Zealand's Hayden Padden, ladies and gentlemen, proof that class and talent know no borders or terrain.